Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Xing Fen, the CEO, the boss of the fourth stage of Sifu. Now she's a weird one. A lot of people seem to find her a lot easier than the bosses that they've encountered on the way up to here, but it's still quite a tricky fight to do well. Just a quick note, this guide is only going to use basic attacks, no unlocks or upgrades of any kind. I just want to do this so no matter what unlocks you've got or what moves you've got, you're going to be able to apply the strategies that I show you. Generally, it's a long range fight. Don't get impatient and try to close the distance without creating a chance to do so. Wait, avoid, run in a bit and wait again. Don't worry about landing hits while you're running up or getting in there. You need to create an opportunity to punish her through baiting the close up attacks. She's very passive, she won't close the gap, so take some time to learn the timings of her basic combos. You could try bringing a staff from the mini boss before her, it'll help do good damage to her and make blocking a bit safer while you're learning the animations. So, phase one, she's got these two sort of long range combos that sort of start with her spinning her weapon around. Both of them hit high, high, low, but they both got quite different timings. Let's look at this one first and listen to the timing. Now the last hit of this does huge damage to your structure, so don't block it, try and parry or avoid it. Parrying is useful because you'll build her structure damage and it's not like you're going to be able to punish her when she's in freeze frame. The alternative version of the combo goes like this. Now the tell for this is there's like a delay before the first one where she sort of turns her body. The attack loops out to the other side. So adjust your timing accordingly, it's a much slower combo. Now if she hits you with the first or second of either of those combos, she has this tendency to not finish the combo and she'll do a step forward or a step backward and then do the delayed big swing and sweep that comes out to the side. So watch out for that. Generally what I'd recommend you do, as usual, block the first attack, see what's coming and then deal with the rest as you've learnt. If she does manage to sweep you and knock you over, she's very quick at doing her overhead smash. So make sure you're tapping R2 as soon as you land so that you roll and get up as quick as possible. She does have one last sort of alternative version of this sort of spinny wind up thing. This is just a one off attack and then it'll just come straight at you. Blocking should cover it. So if you just go in for the block first attack strategy, you should be fine. She generally only tends to do this when you're a little bit closer. Be careful because she's got this really sneaky turning arm attack thing. Very high structure damage. The only tell is her weapons won't start spinning around. Good thing to do is to listen out for the shout she makes. This is the only time she will make that specific noise. So listen to that. If you manage to dodge it, you'll get a very good crumple and punish. Other thing that's sneaky about this palm attack is she seems to be able to cancel her combos into the palm attack if you're too close, so be very, very careful for that. As soon as you see those strings stop spinning around, you know she's going to do it. You can use this to your advantage though, because when you're close, she's much more likely to do the palm attack. Once you get too close to her, she does a couple of things. She can do like a little cartwheel, which has got like an attack that comes straight out of it, which is generally quite easy to avoid, but just blocking is pretty safe. If you get her right back up into the corner, she'll do a little sort of grapple hook move back into the middle of the stage. Wrong? But that's it for stage one. She hasn't got many attacks. Learn those animations and then before you know it, you'll be in phase two. And phase two is very interesting against her because generally she's got exactly the same attacks from phase one. Everything seems a little bit faster and there seems to be less downtime between her attacks. She does have some new attacks though. So we've got this new spinny attack, which is very similar to Kuroki's terrifying all high combo. This just sort of goes like this. Not quite as scary as Kuroki's. Quite easy to avoid the last hit, even if you get hit by the previous hits. She's also got a new three hit combo here where she does a sort of leap over here, kick, and then uses her weapon. Here's the timings. First two hits are super low posture damage, so you're quite safe to just block them. Make sure you get that avoid in for the last hit. One tricky change from phase one is her slower of the long range combos. The first hit will now grab you and pull you in if you block. So you're going to need to avoid it. It's the same animation as before. Nice and slow, she'll spin around before she throws it out. She gets an orange glow around her hand. If caught, you'll definitely get kicked by the second hit, but you'll always be able to avoid the last hit. So again, using our strategy of block first hit, if you notice she's going to do the slower first attack, you should have enough time to avoid. And one last new combo that she's got is this strange one where she ducks backwards, does a punch, does like a spin around and then does like a low attack. 
So this one's not too bad, just watch out for this crouch, it's got quite a distinctive animation. As soon as you see that, you know she's going to be doing that low attack as the last hit. And then that should be it. She's quite a straightforward boss, she seems to take damage very quickly. I don't know if that's the whole, she's old, and when you're old you have less HP. That's kind of in-universe and makes sense, right? Anywho, hope's been helpful guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.